understanding how God leads. And we are looking at part 1a as we begin this series of teaching. Understanding how God leads. Whatever provision God has made for man, when you lack understanding, you cannot enjoy the blessings. The Bible says, good understanding give it favor. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. The way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding. When you have a good understanding of any subject, you take the maximum blessings it carries. And the subject of divine direction is one key area that every one of us needs comprehensive understanding or else a life of struggle is inevitable. In Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way. There is a way. It is not all doors that are open, that are open by God. Even devil opens doors. So if you don't understand accurately the leadings of God, a man can keep going in a circle in life with great potential, but he may have no headway in life without the direction of God in his life. There is a way that seemeth right. It looks good. It seems right. It's, it seems promising, but behind it, there is a trap. You know, when we were growing up as little children in those days when they give you illustration about the devil and I think they still do they paint the devil as an ugly figure with all manners of fierce look if that's actually how the devil looks he won't be catching anybody who will see an ugly figure like that and move towards him no he comes like angel of light. He looks so, so, so good, so pleasant. That door looks so good. And that's why as businessmen and women, they present to you a good proposal. Tells you the profit margin. Every two months, it will yield a profit margin of $300,000. $1.2 million. And then it looks attractive, but it is a trap. Praise the name of the Lord. That it seems right does not mean God is there. That it seems good does not mean God is there. Many have taken such kinds of opportunities and lost their destiny. Sometimes it even comes in form of a job very good presenting all manners of things and then you jump into it before you know you are trapped and destiny eroded and that's how many people lost God, the leadings of God in their life and started a life of struggles so the subject of divine direction cannot be overemphasized. It is one thing that everyone will need in life in order to get to your destination. What you don't know, you don't know. You must learn. We cannot know what you don't know. And when you want to learn it, you pay the price for it. The devil thrives on the ignorance of man to hold him down captive. In Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 13, the Bible says, Therefore my people are gone into captivity. Why? Because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished. And their multitude dry up with fast. They go into captivity. Because of lack of knowledge. 
they are enslaved because of lack of knowledge. Not because the devil is stronger than them. Not because God has not made provision for them. No. Because of lack of knowledge. Because of lack of knowledge. What you are looking for can be just right by your side. But if you don't know, you keep rolling. You keep going around. You keep struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. That's the place of knowledge concerning our destiny. And that's why all through this month, God will be opening our eyes to this subject of divine direction. To understand how God leads. I tell you, God's people, life without a bearing is a burden. Life is meant to be enjoyed, not to be endured, not for struggles, but without God leading you. Struggle is inevitable. Anyone going everywhere can never get anywhere. You must know where you are going. They ask you, where are you going? Everywhere. Till Jesus comes, you may never get anywhere. Praise the name of the Lord. So you must know where you are going. There is a glorious place prepared for you in destiny. God has created us and redeemed us, not for shame, not for reproach, but to a glorious destiny. To a glorious destiny. There is a glorious place. There is an enviable place in destiny that is waiting for you. But you need to locate it. And God must help you to locate it so that your life can be with meaning. Therefore, our responsibility is to allow God to show us. In Exodus chapter 23 and verses 20 and 21. Exodus chapter 23 and verses 20 and 21. Behold, I send an angel before you to keep you in your ways. And to bring you into the place. Can I hear you say the place? Say it one more time. The place which I have prepared for you. God has prepared a glorious place for you. He said, but we'll beware of him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. Beware. Be sensitive. Know when he's speaking. And then obey his voice. Provoke him not by doing a contrary thing. For he will not pardon your transgression. Hallelujah. I send an angel to guide you, to lead you into that prepared place where you will be celebrated, not where you will be tolerated. A place where you will take charge, not where you will be under. I have prepared that place for you, all that you need. Let me show you. I know the place. I know the way. You don't know the way. I know the way. Let me show you. Let me bring you into that place. That is where your shining is. Until you locate your own place, struggling continues. Every man has his own place. Every man. So there is no need to be, to be jealous. There is no need to be angry. When you see somebody else who has taken his own place and is shining, he's making impact. You to have a place. Where the world can celebrate you. When you are in the wrong place, wrong things keeps happening. Some people now, where they are now, by destiny, they have nothing to do there. They have left their place. They have not located their place. Some people who, use, who, who ought to be in some sectors of life because they, like, they want quick money. They are in a place where they are struggling. They are in another vocation where they are struggling. Somebody who is made to be a giant in business is somewhere there with one meager income struggling. Let God show you your place. My prayer is throughout this month, God will show you your place in the name of Jesus. I say God will show you your place in the name of Jesus. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 7, the Bible says, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee. Can I hear you say bringeth thee? 
Come and say it one more time. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. He brings you into, he knows the good land. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. A land. Verse 8. A land of wheat and barley, vines and fig tree and pomegranate, a land of oil, olive, and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. That's what God is doing for you this month. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Verse 10. When thou hast eaten and thou art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given thee. When thou art eaten and thou art full, when God shows you your place, you don't suffer lack. You enjoy sufficiency. When thou art eaten and when thou art full, when thou art eaten, when thou art full, that's sufficiency. Praise the name of the Lord. And that comes via divine direction. Hallelujah. So divine guidance is indispensable for the fulfillment of our destiny. If our destiny must be fulfilled in God, we need divine guidance. We need to be guided divinely. Hallelujah. Concerning Jesus in John chapter 8 and verse 29, he gave us his secret. And he that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. For I do always the things that please him. He has not left me alone. So if you see anything happening around my life, he is leading me. He held my hands. And I have surrendered my hands into his hands. He knows the way. I have surrendered my destiny into his hands to lead me. I'm not led by my senses. I'm not led by my certificates. I'm not led by my popularity. I'm not led by people's opinion. No. I have surrendered my life into his hands for him to lead me because he has the blueprint of my destiny. That was the secret of Jesus. Hear what Moses said in Exodus chapter 33 and verses 13 to 15. Exodus chapter 33 and verses 13 to 15. Now therefore I pray thee. If I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way. Show me. That's the only thing I'm looking for. Show me, guide me, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is a people. And he said, my presence shall go with thee. I will lead you. And I will give you rest. My presence shall go with thee. Show me your way. Show me your way. Or else, I'm doomed. Show me your way. Or else, struggle is inevitable. A life of impact, therefore, and fulfillment of destiny is at the mercy of divine direction. Praise the name of the Lord. Why do you need divine guidance? Because it is your authentic access to supernatural breakthroughs in life. If it is normal result you want in life, be guided by normal principles. You'll just be there as a mediocre at best. But if it is outstanding results, impact that you desire, and fulfillment of destiny, you need to be divinely guided. Hallelujah. We need to be divinely guided. Hallelujah. How do we assess divine guidance? Number one, we must be born again. We must be born again. In John chapter 3 and verse 3, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see. He cannot see. He cannot enjoy the benefit of the kingdom. He cannot enjoy the privileges of the kingdom except a man is born again. He cannot see. In John chapter 1 and verse 12, as many as receive him, to them he gave power 
to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The only sons are led. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Only sons are led are led by God. Only sons are guided. And until you give your life to Jesus, you can't be regarded a child of God. And you don't have access to his divine leading. It's only sheep that can hear his voice. They know his voice because they have his spirit. Until your spirit man is connected to the spirit of God, you cannot hear him even he's speaking. You can't hear. You can't hear. Oh, you can only hear the voice of a stranger. But the voice of God can only be picked by the Spirit of God. And you can't operate in the Spirit of God except you are born again. How do you have access to divine guidance? Number two, you must be clothed with meekness. God does not lead the proud. Those who know, they can't be under the divine guidance of God. Those who think they know. Hallelujah. You must be clothed. You must be clothed with meekness. You must be covered with meekness. You must live a life of meekness. In Psalm 25 and verse 9, the Bible says, the meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. God is looking for the meek to teach. A proud person cannot be taught. He knows everything. A proud person cannot be led. Oh, he feels he knows everything. He knows the way. So God do not lead proud people. He leads only people that will obey his instruction. Only people that will see his own ways as higher than their own ways. And meekness is of the heart. The last instruction God gave you, what did you do with it? Did you not trade your own better way? In quote. God do not waste his own time. He gives you an instruction. You do your own. He gives you another instruction. You do your own. He gives you another one. You do your own. He leaves you. He leaves you. Why? Because you feel you know. You are well read. You are learned. You can speak big grammars. Praise the name of the Lord. Big grammars. The meek. The meek. The meek. The meek. It's not your English. It is the hand of God over your life. We had the testimony that was shared by our, our brother this morning. He's a father of graduates. So all the English he should be speaking, the children are speaking it. Praise the name of the Lord. His result we are talking about, not English, not grammar. Praise the name of the Lord. The meek will he guide. Let God lead you. Subject your plans to God and let him direct you. There is nothing wrong in planning. In fact, it is our responsibility to plan. But when you plan, commit it unto the Lord. Commit your ways unto the Lord. And then he will direct your steps. It is in man to plan. It is in God to direct Subject your plans to God. Subject your ways to God. The meek will he guide. The meek. The meek. And verse 12 says, What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. In Numbers chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3, we saw the display of pride there. By Miriam. Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses. Why? Because of the Ethiopian woman which he has married for. He had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, had the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? 
Is he the only one God can speak? We two were here. We are spiritual. Had he not spoken also by us? What is it? Is he the only man of God? Is he the only one who should be talking? And the Lord had it. Moses didn't even hear. The Lord had it. They felt they were too much. How can, is it only Moses that God can speak to? They saw themselves too much. And God does not judge the way man judges. You can judge with your own parameters. But God has his own parameters. And look at verse 3. When God had it. The Bible tells us what was it that linked Moses with God so much. This man Moses they were talking about was very meek. The meek will always go up. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. That was what endeared him to God. That was why God will always speak to him and not to the proud. The meek. Number three, how do you assess divine guidance? Be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit. How do you have access to divine guidance? You want to be led? Be baptized. Because God speaks to man through his spirit. Until you have that connection in the spirit. Until when you have that communion with the Holy Spirit. You can't understand the language of God. Because it is the Holy Spirit that interprets the language and the ways of God to man. In John chapter 16 and verses 12 to 15. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them. How be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Hallelujah. He will guide you. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and he will show it unto you. All things that the Father had are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it to me. He has the blueprint of God's agenda for your life. He is the one who can show you the details of God's plan for your life. So if you must hear him accurately, if you must, you know, if he must guide you accurately, you must have a deep communion with the Holy Spirit. You must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes as you begin to commune with the Holy Spirit and begin to pray in the Spirit, he begins to show you certain things. He begins to lead you that, hey, that contract you want to sign, don't sign it. Oh. Check, there is one thing. Go and read it again. Go and read it. Oh, that job that you have just gotten. Watch it. Another better one is coming. This one is the trap. Hey, that young man you think is spiritual is a pretender. He knows all the church language, but he's not born again. Check. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. He shows us, he leads us. Because there is a way that seemeth right. But there's a way of destruction. The way of destruction. Hey, that person, you want to make your business but now stop it. Stop it is an agent of the devil. He will carry the business away from you. Praise the name of the Lord. That journey you want to make, don't go. There is danger on the way. That's what the Holy Ghost does. And this is one of the greatest assets of this commission. That the devil cannot stop. You've had God's servant. The apostle over this commission said it many times. People ask, what is your secret? What is the secret of this ever-growing, ever-blessing commission? He said, we do nothing except 
it is commanded. Except he gives us a go ahead. Except he gives us direction. Hallelujah. Because divine direction will always lead to distinction in life. Divine direction. Divine direction. Divine direction. Hallelujah. My prayer is that all through this month, every step that you will take, God will direct you in the name of Jesus. God will direct you to a place of your, your destiny in the name of Jesus. God is directing you to a place of greatness in the name of Jesus. If your amen can be louder than that, you have a quick response from heaven. If God is leading me, what are some biblical proofs? What are the biblical proofs of being led by the Spirit? If truly God is leading me, how do I know what are the things to look after, to watch out for as an indicator that God is there in any step that I'm taking? Number one, peace. Peace. Whenever there is a leading of God concerning anything, there is peace of mind. Peace. Peace. Peace of mind. Hallelujah. The peace that passeth all understanding. You just feel peaceful in your heart. In Psalm 85 and verse 8, I will hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints and let them not turn again to folly. He will speak peace. He will speak peace. You want to take a step concerning a thing and anytime you try to take that step, there is fear inside of you. You are troubled inside. Watch it. There may be one scorpion waiting there. Praise the name of the Lord. You want to invest in a business and every other thing is okay. Anytime you just want to take that step, either to sign or take one step, there is trouble inside of you. You, you can't explain. Watch it. Watch it. You want to pick a job. And then, they have even given you the job. But each time you just want to take one for the serve, there is a caution inside. You are just troubled. You don't know. You can't explain. You don't know why. You can't explain. But you don't have rest inside. You are troubled. Watch it. Somebody has spoken to you about marriage. And everything about him look good from the outside. But each time you just fix a date to go and know your parents, you can't sleep again. You can't sleep. Watch it. Peace. Whatever God is in, there is peace. Jesus was inside the boat. And there was turbulence outside. He was restful inside and came and spoke peace to the wind. The peace of God that passeth understanding. And let me say it also. Even though maybe you have taken a step or you are in something and then there are challenges. It looks as if one challenge or the other. Challenge or the other. But somehow with all those challenges, there is inner peace. Don't quit. There is greatness in front. So the presence of challenge sometimes may not connote that God is not there. No. If God is dead, the challenges are coming. It is only going to make your testimony sweeter. Because opposition is for your up position. Without test, there cannot be testimony. After every test is a testimony. The devil will show you the test 
Look further. The testimony is in front. Peace. In Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17 and 18, the Bible says, Thus hear the Lord, thy Redeemer, the only one of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shalt go. I teach you, I, I lead you. Hallelujah. I know the way, let me lead you. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. He said, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. The peace of God. <laughs> That's why when the wind blows, if God is there, other boats may be sinking, but yours can never sink. Can never sink. As a matter of fact, the more the storms the more God lifts you above the storms. You will just be going up. The storm that was designed by the devil to drown people for you, it is taking you up. You know the story of the, I mean, the, the horse that they wanted to bury alive? Look for a big pitch. Push the horse inside and started pouring sand on earth to bury the horse alive. And According to that story, as they were pouring the sand, the horse was just shaking. And then stepping on the sand, mashing it very well. The more they pour the sand, the more the horse begins to come up. The more they pour the sand, they didn't know. They thought they were burying the horse. They didn't know they were elevating the horse. And suddenly, the horse that they felt by now should have been buried, they saw its head up. They saw his body. Praise the name of the Lord. When God is in anything, no matter the challenges, no matter the storms, it ends up pushing you higher. Praise the name of the Lord. Peace. In case you are passing through any storm right now, all that you need to do first, locate. Lord, are you in this thing? And then if you have peace of heart, peace of mind, just settle there. Just settle there. No matter what the devil tries to show you, it may be showing you an end. Turn it to a bend. You will get to your destination. Can I hear louder? Amen. Number two, biblical proof for being led by the Spirit. Supernatural favor. Supernatural favor. When God is leading you, you enjoy countless realm of favor. 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 You will enjoy favor on every side. You will enjoy favor on every side. You will enjoy favor. When God is leading you, you will enjoy favor on every side. You will enjoy favor on every side. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21, we know the story of the Egyptian, I mean the children of Israel in Egypt. It was time for God to lead them out. And he sent Moses. And what happened? Because it was God's program. It was God's agenda. It was God's leading. The Bible says, uh, it says, I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when they go, they shall not go empty. God cannot be le leading you and leave you empty. No, that's a paradox. It can't happen. If it is God that is leading you, you can lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Hallelujah. I shall not want any good thing. I shall not want any good thing. For he maketh me to lie down. He grants me rest. Hallelujah. In verse 6, he said, For surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When God is leading you, surely, goodness must follow you. And the twin brother, Mercy, will join you. Not for one day, but all the days of your life. All the days. All the days. There will be no dry season for you. Hallelujah. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. It shall grow like cedar. Hallelujah. That's what divine guidance does. It opens you to a life of favor. Favor. If God is leading you, no luck. No matter the situation, no matter the economic situation of the nation, no lack. 
In Luke chapter 22 and verse 35, he led them. Gave them assignment to go and preach. And he said unto them, when I sent you without pause, when I sent you, and script and shoes, did you lack anything? And they said, no, nothing. Nothing. When it, when it is God that is leading you, you can't lack. You can't lack. I prophesy to you, all through this month, you will not lack any good thing in the name of Jesus. <laughs> By divine guidance, I command supernatural abundance for you on every side. In your business, no lack. In your career, no lack. In your family, no lack. If you believe it, shout the loudest, amen. amen. Well, today is our covenant day of all round rest. Rest from every struggle. Enough is enough. You have struggled enough. Walk, 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 walk. But nothing to show. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Afflictions everywhere. Challenges everywhere. Enough is enough. God is giving you rest this month. God is giving you rest from today. In the name of Jesus. A call into the kingdom of God is a call to a life of rest. A call into the kingdom is a call to a life of rest. In Matthew chapter 11 and verses 28 to 30. Come unto me all you that travail. And of heavy laden and I will give you rest. Come. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me for I meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your souls. Come. Come and have rest. Not come and continue to struggle. Come. That language of struggle is not your portion. No. As a child of God. As the redeemer of God. That's not your language. They say, bros, how is everything? Ah, we are hustling. That's not your language as a, as a child of God. My sister, how is everything? Mm. We do, we do patch. Patch, patch. Are you vulcanizer? Praise the name of the Lord. We are struggling. We are struggling to make life, to make all ends meet. We are struggling, oh, we do. Anyhow, man, just the struggle. That's not your language. A call into the kingdom is a call to a life of rest. A life of rest. From today, your struggle is over. From today, your struggle is over. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 7 to 10. And the Lord said to the children of Israel, I have seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. I know their sorrows. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian. Every Egyptian that have tied down your destiny, they must lose it this morning in the name of Jesus. And to bring them up, up, God is taking you from pit up in the name of Jesus. Out of that land, unto a good land, a large land, a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanite, Hittite, Amorite, Perizzite, Hivite, Jebusite. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have seen the oppression. Therewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. This program, this day is said by the leading of the Holy Spirit upon the leadership of this commission, because God has seen that thing oppressing your destiny. God has seen the struggle over your life. I therefore prophesy to you today by the power of God and time to your rest in the name of Jesus. Amen. That struggle ceases in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone who follows Jesus ends up in a place of rest. Hallelujah. We must recognize that all around rest is the will of God for the redeemed. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief Cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come to give you life. 
and to give you more abundantly. More abundantly, not patch patch. More abundantly to say to you. That's what it means. In every area of life, God will say to you this month in the name of Jesus. I say, my God will say to you in the name of Jesus. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, according as his divine power had given unto us life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to glory and virtue, not shame. He has called us to a glorious life, not a struggling life, not a life of pain. No, a glorious life, a life of beauty, a life of attraction, a life of envy. That's what God has called us into. Not today you are finishing one problem, another one is starting, another, you know, enough is enough. I decree, rest for you in the name of Jesus. How do I enter and assess this rest? How to enjoy the reality of this all-round rest? How do I enjoy the reality of this all-round rest? Number one, you must seek to learn what it takes. You must seek to know what it takes. You learn it. You know how to. In Matthew chapter 11, where we have just read, verses 28 and 29, come, I will give you rest. But how do you enter into that rest? Sit down, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you. Take the responsibility. And learn of me, learn of me. Learn of me. Learn it. In any area of life you are suffering, Learn the principles, the scriptural principle. It is light that guarantees your flight. Learn what it is. It is light that guarantees your flight in life. It is light that guarantees your flight in life. Take responsibility and learn the ways. Stop looking for the tricks. Learn the ways. Learn of me. Learn of me. Where any area of life you are challenged, sit down. You need light in that area. Sit down with your Bible. Sit down with books in that area. There are inspirational books in that area. If it is in the area of succeeding, go on success. If it is the area of your health, go and sit down and gain light. Learn how to have rest in that area. If it is in the area of prosperity, afflicted by all manners of financial pressure and financial reproaches, sit down. Learn the principles of the kingdom. Kingdom prosperity, not the way of the world. So in whatever area of life you are challenged, sit down and learn kingdom principles in that area. And then you will enter into your rest. Hallelujah. And number two, you must remain in love with God. You must remain in love with God. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, the Bible says, all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. All things work together for good. All things work together for good. All things work together for good. God keep turning everything for good to those who love him. Keep loving God. In John chapter 14 and verse 21, he says, everyone that loves me will obey my commandment. He that had my commandment and keepeth them, it is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. God is manifesting himself to love us. Giving them rest in every area of life. Go after God with all your zest. Show that you love God by loving what God loves. Thank God for many of you who went passionately after souls all through this operation. That's the heartbeat of God. If you love God, you will love So, If you love God, you will love his word. If you love God, you will love his, you know, his church. If you love God, you will love the brethren. You will love the brethren. Keep loving God. And then, you keep enjoying rest in every area of life. Number three, we must enter into a covenant to keep serving God and the interests of his kingdom. Taking it as a priority. Keep 
serving God. Enter into a covenant to keep serving God. And the interest of his kingdom. And nothing will ever go down in your life. Enter into a covenant. Make it a covenant between you and God. When you are in a covenant between God and you, you can't be moved by anything. Paul says, none of these things move me. Acts chapter 20 and verse 24. When you are in a covenant with God, you will, not, you will not be moved by any physical parameter. You will not be moved by somebody's nonchalant attitude to serving God. You will not be moved with what is in your pocket or what is not there. You will not be moved by the economic situation. No! You will not be moved by any discouragement around you because you are in a covenant. You are in a covenant. Hallelujah. In second... Chronicles chapter 15, verses 12 to 15, paraphrase. They entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart, not, not, not partially. With all their heart and with all their souls. And, we, and in verse 15, he gave them all round rest. He gave them all round rest. He gave them all round rest. He was fond of them and the Lord gave them rest round about. That's all round rest. You want to enjoy rest in your finances. Rest in your body. Rest in your family. Rest in your career. Rest concerning your children. These are some of the assets. To rest. Any area of life you have trouble. Today, I prophesy rest in the name of Jesus. The troubles are over in your life. He is a God that makes wars to cease. Every war of the devil against your destiny. It will cease this morning in the name of Jesus. Every one of you that have been in partnership with God for the fulfillment of this operation, I command God's hand upon you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, we thank you because no one can come except you draw them. You draw this multitude from everywhere. You establish them. You drew them into your kingdom. We thank you and we give you praise in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the massive salvation of souls. We thank you for the establishment. We thank you for massive restoration. We give you praise. We thank you. Receive all our praises in the name of Jesus. He says you shall serve and he shall bless. Because you have put yourself on the line for this operation. For being a, you know, part of this bringing in souls. I command your blessings in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is yours, that the enemy has held down, it is loosed in the name of Jesus. I speak to you by the power of God. Every struggle over your life is over today in the name of Jesus. Every struggle over your business is over today in the name of Jesus. Every struggle against your children is over today in the name of Jesus. Every fight against your health is over today in the name of Jesus. Every struggle against your career is over today in the name of Jesus. Every struggle against your peace is over today in the name of Jesus. Because you have put yourself on the line for this kingdom matter. Enter into your rest now. I command all round rest for you in the name of Jesus. Every Egyptian sitting over your destiny, they are loosed in the name of Jesus. Every Goliath fighting against the fulfillment of God's purpose for your life, they are brought down in the name of Jesus. Every stagnation that have ravaged your destiny this year, it is over to the name of Jesus. Every financial tension, I command no more in the name of Jesus. Every marital arrest is over today in the name of Jesus. Every eligible single still struggling and struggling, looking for how to be settled. I command finally your settlement in the name of Jesus. Whatever issue that have troubled your destiny will trouble them today in the name of Jesus. And I decree rest in that area in the name of Jesus. Rest in the in the name of Jesus. Every issue of concern concerning your destiny, it is turning to testimony now. 
the Egyptian you saw before, you shall see them no more. In the name of Jesus. Whatever issue you have raised as a prayer point before God, I command rest in that area now. Rest in that area now. In the name of Jesus. I decree this week will be a week of your testimonies. You will plug the harvest of your testimony in those areas. In the name of Jesus. The journey you are making is blessed in the name of Jesus. Favor is hitting you from every side. The reward of service will begin to speak in your life. In the name of Jesus. Go in peace. Be blessed. In Jesus mighty name. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us. All the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then, expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. And let everyone say, Amen and Amen.